So we're going to start a new problem uh, where we're going to combine a, a series of different loads uh, which are going to cause a variety of different uh, load mechanisms and different kinds of stresses and we're going to show how we can break these down into their individual components and combine them using superposition to figure out what the stress uh, state is at a particular point. So we've got uh, the problem laid out here on the sheet. It says to calculate the state of stress at point A. So point A is at a particular point on the cross section on the plane or cross section AA shown here at the origin of our right hand system. And it's a, uh, a bar with a cantilever sticking out and some loads applied, which are going to cause a variety of torsion and bending and, and shear on our plane AA. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to have to figure out what the load components are at the plane AA so that we can calculate what the stresses are at A. So I'm just going to go ahead and create another sketch here, uh, which is going to uh, allow us to translate the various force components from the end of the arm down to the section AA so that we can then go on to calculate uh, the stresses caused by those force components. So here I have, I've uh, drawn another sketch which uh, will facilitate the, that translation. Uh, you see that I've drawn in as dotted all the area between the plane at AA and the point where our loads are applied. And we're going to, th this will allow us to uh, translate those load components uh, to get their effects or their equivalent effects that they would cause at the plane AA. Now to make this particularly functional, I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit so that we can see it. We're going to go through a, a systematic approach where we will translate the loads first down the arm and then down the post to the section at AA, accounting for any effects that might have to be a common or accounted for as we translate the load itself. Okay, we've zoomed in. Uh, to this image which we're going to use to show the translation of the various force components to their equivalent set of force components at the plane of interest which is of course the cross-section AA. We're going to start by moving or translating the 1500 Newton force and we'll do it in a two-step process. We'll move it or translate it uh, uh, initially from the end of the arm uh, lateral to from the arm to the top of the post and set up a set of equivalent effects there. We'll then uh, translate it again from the top of the post to cross-section AA and end up with a final set of uh, load effects at that point. We'll then repeat the entire process for the 1000 Newton force uh, at the end of the arm. Okay, we're going to start by translating the 1500 Newton force from the end of the arm to the top of the post. However, as we do this, we see that that changes the perpendicular distance from the z-axis. So we're going to have to add a torque or a moment about the z-axis to account for this change. And you'll note here, using the right-hand rule, that this should be a positive torque. Uh, we can then move or translate the torque down to the cross-section without any further impact. However, when we go to translate the 1500 Newton force, now located at the top of the post, down to the cross-section, we see that we're once again changing the perpendicular distance, this time about the y-axis. So we're going to have to add a moment about the y-axis to account for this effect. In this case, it's going to be a negative uh, moment. Okay, so I've uh, just moved the animations into the permanent picture and what we should do before we move on is just capture the magnitudes uh, of these moments uh, and force. So I'm just going to do that here. So the first one we have is the 1500 newtons. So we can write that in here. Then the second one that we moved was the cause the torque uh, about the z-axis. So we write that in here. So that's the 1500 newtons and it's perpendicular distance you recall was the 400 millimeters and the last one uh, by translating it from the top of the post down to the middle of the post uh, this caused the bending about the y-axis and that was 1500 multiplied by the perpendicular distance which was the 200 millimeter 
Okay, the next step is to translate the thousand newton force from the end of the arm to the top of the post. And we can do this without introducing any moment or torque impact because we're translating the force along its line of action and thus we're not changing any of the perpendicular distances to the other axes. However, as we can see here, when we translate the force from the top of the post down to the cross section, we notice we are indeed changing the perpendicular distance, in this case about the x-axis. So we'll need to introduce a moment about the x-axis, in this case negative, again using the right hand rule, to counter the loss of this effect as we translate the force. Now, if you're having a difficulty trying to figure out which axis the moment should be about, you can usually figure it out by visualizing the impacts. Uh, however, the torque or moment is about an axis which is perpendicular both to the force being translated as well as to the direction that it's being translated. You can use this to check and make sure that you're getting it in the right direction. So now we're just going to transfer those uh, animation vectors uh, onto the permanent drawing itself and include their magnitudes. So in this case, the 1000 Newton force translated uh, shows up here. And the bending about the x-axis as a result of uh, translating it from the top of the post down to the plane AA uh, shows up here. And that magnitude would be 1000 Newtons multiplied by its perpendicular distance, which was the vertical translation of 200 millimeters. And that basically shows us all of the components of load that we have to consider when we're trying to figure out what the stress uh, condition is at point A. Okay, so I've uh, zoomed back out and we can see all of the components of load at the cross-section AA that we're considering. And I've gone ahead and calculated all the cross-sectional properties for that cross-section and you can see them, they've been added to the sheet up on the right. So that concludes sort of part one of this question, which is to figure out what the components of load are on the cross-section of interest. And we're going to just take a break here and then we're going to come back and calculate at that cross-section what the stresses are at A caused by these components of load.